Dixon and the Directress of our Christian Education Department, Dr. Longmire, I greet you in that wonderful name of Jesus. It's always such an honor to be able to stand and speak to the people of God and our listening audience concerning the things of God. I celebrate my brothers and sisters who invest their time and they make an intentional effort to invest in Christian education. It is so true that we must commit ourselves to lifelong learning, especially the things of the Lord. As with any of the stories of the life of Jesus, they each have a great significance. Today's lesson is entitled, The Boy, Jesus. And we will be teaching from our Apostolic Light Manual, um, the summer edition of it. So this is where our references will take place. While preparing for the class, I felt such a heaviness and such a burden for our parents and those who are involved in the raising of children. And before we even begin our lesson today, I want us to just pray for parents. Father, it is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we do come blessing you and honoring you, extolling you and exalting you thanking you for the power and the authority of the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for giving us the opportunity to be parents. Father, I thank you that you have given us mothers and you have given us fathers and grandparents and extended family. So this day we lift them before you. We lift them because of this awesome responsibility to guide to shape, to mold the lives of these young people. I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you will hear their prayers and their supplications before you. I ask, Lord God, that you will download wisdom and knowledge and understanding in them, that they'll be able to speak life and truth into their children. I pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the needs of the households. I, I pray for the financial needs. I, I pray, Lord God, for the housing needs. I, I pray for the needs for the food. Oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, cover these children with the blood of Jesus. Father, I pray for them to be covered from COVID-19. I pray from the infant, Lord God, up through, Lord God, the toddlers and, and all ages of our children. Please, Lord God, cover them. We lift parents, we lift children, we lift guardians, we lift grandparents to you this day. For these things we pray now in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Our topic, the boy, Jesus. Prior to reading our, our scripture, I want us to look at our teaching objectives or what we will aim for. Firstly, we want to explore. Now let's look at the definition of explore. As we know, it's a verb, to travel in or through an unfamiliar area or country in order to learn more or to familiarize oneself with it. We want thus to explore the set time in the life of Jesus. He is being raised in the traditions of a Jewish household. And at the age of 12, he is making the journey with his family to Jerusalem, to the temple for the Passover celebration. Now this celebration normally lasts around seven days and includes many festivities. What will Jesus experience while he is there, what will ignite the dimension of who he is? And what will people experience when they meet Jesus? Then we want to get the feel. We want to sense what is occurring. 
What did the rabbis learn and the learned men when they interacted with this boy, Jesus? And then what did Mary and Joseph feel? Their emotions had to be all over the place. For as you remember, as the story goes forward, when they left Jerusalem going home, Jesus was not with them. Where is Jesus? Is he lost? Has he been kidnapped? Where is Jesus? And finally, our lesson is going to cause us to rejoice when we ponder and when we think about the wisdom of God in action. So let us begin by reading our focus scripture from Luke 2 and 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Speaking of Jesus, the other scriptures for our consideration will be taken out of Ecclesiastes chapter 1, and we'll continue 1 through 7. But right now I want to read for you verse number 1 in chapter 3. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Timing is highlighted in these verses. For this teaching, we will expound upon season, time, and purpose. It is clear in the life of Jesus that he was birthed to fulfill divine purpose. To fulfill that purpose, it is necessary for him to experience seasons in life. Now these seasons were set to a time. You know, we have spring, we have summer, we have fall, and we have winter. They are set in our Gregorian calendar to a time. Well, there are seasons and times that occurred in the life of Jesus. And we find within the scriptures, it's often these two words, time and seasons, can be interchangeable. His birth was set to a divine time. In Vine's Bible Dictionary, it has a depth in length word description and definition for the word season. I want to highlight by extracting a portion of that definition. Season is to signify a time or a period possessed of certain characteristics. Note, again, the word season and time are interchangeable. Season is often primarily thought as kairos, as, as that, that set time. These characteristics were surrounding the period where Jesus was born. The season to fulfill the birth of Jesus was not utopic. Herod had set out a decree that any infant under the age of two years old was to be killed in hopes that he would kill the Messiah. You see, every dream and purpose that God sends forth is met with an adversarial force because they do not want to see the promises of God fulfilled. This set Mary and Joseph out of their comfort area away from their home, away from the support of their family, where they had prepared for an arrival in a place that they knew, now they must journey to a place that they do not know. A place that's not waiting for the birth of a king or a messiah to say nothing of the birth of the king of kings. So now their trust has to be and what was spoken to them prophetically by the angel. Have you ever arrived at a season in life where you're anticipating an atmosphere filled with peace and with happiness and, and only to find there's turmoil, upheaval, and fear? I don't think any of us expected to enter into 
our summer months and even out of our spring with some of the apprehension that we have that this unprecedented time that we are experiencing with this COVID-19 has brought us into. But that does not negate the fact that God has given us a promise and his divine purpose will be filled just like it was with the boy Jesus. The entire life of Jesus was set to seasons and times from his birth to his death. This lesson is filled with prophetic promise and hope. Circumstances may not appear the best, but God is in absolute control. This lesson also helps the awareness of parents. For you see, we do not know who our children are and who they are destined to be. I remember when um, the children were brought to the altar here at Calvary many years ago when Bishop Wagner would hold them and he would bless them and dedicate them unto God, he would say, we know not whom we hold. Though Mary had received a prophetic word and though Joseph had had a dream, did they really know who this Messiah, who this king would be and all the pieces that would take place in his life? Oh, maybe that's why I'm feeling the burden for parents. Do we really know who our children are? Do we really know who our grandchildren are? The weight of the responsibility of who these young people are, who these lives are to become. Indeed, are they the next president? Are they the next inventor? Are they the next scientist. We don't know who they are, but we do have a responsibility to fulfill the will of God when he allowed them to be birthed through us and placed in our homes. You see, raising children is a process for both parents and children alike. Process is defined as a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. Mary did not know she would be chosen to conceive and birth the Messiah. It was a learning process. Let me stop there. Don't be so hard on yourself. We're all learning. We all are learning how to hear God, how to trust God, how to believe God, and most importantly, how to obey God. The Bible says, and the angel came in unto her, speaking of Mary, and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Uh, can you imagine an angel coming in, greeting you, and telling you how highly favored you are? He goes on to say, and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Wait, 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 hold. I'm good. Conceive in my womb that I'm going to have a son and his name is going to be Jesus. Well, don't we think we have things out of order? I haven't even married yet. And you're saying this is favor? Oh, my Lord. Doesn't God have a unique way of displaying himself and dis demonstrating his authority in our life? Oh, God, thank God for the faith of Mary. 
The Bible goes on to say, he shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be seen? I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing, my God, that holy thing, which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Mary, this young woman now had the responsibility of raising the boy Jesus, carrying her, him in her womb, the boy Jesus. Well, not only was Mary met with a challenge, but so was Joseph. For you see, Joseph did not know that the young woman that he was engaging to marry would be the mother of the Messiah. All of this can be found when we look in Matthew verses, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Um, take time to read that story. A lot of times we wait till December to read the birth of Jesus, but that's a year-round miracle that happens for us. And, and the Bible tells us that this is what was said to Joseph. Now the birth of Jesus was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. I feel led to ask you, what is the Holy Ghost birthing in you? What have you conceived in your spiritual womb? Maybe you feel that you have not arrived at a particular time in life or living, but if the Holy Ghost has conceived it, then the Holy Ghost will birth it. If the Holy Ghost has put it within you, then the Holy Ghost <clears throat> will bring it to pass. And we give God praise because the Holy Ghost does not stop and start. The Holy Ghost finishes what it begins. Now the Bible goes on to say, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. I'm going to stop there. Don't be so quick to take action. Stop. Ponder. Think. Let the Holy Ghost work with you. Let the Holy Ghost speak to you about what it is doing in you and through you. The Bible says an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. I'm in verse 20 saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. I feel a praise break right there. Right where you are, can you just join me by lifting your hands and tell God, thank God for Jesus. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you for his birth. Thank you for all the processes necessary in bringing us Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord bid in him and took unto him his wife. Now, what a key point. 
When God gives us instructions, when God speaks to us, let us take Joseph as an example. Not only did he hear, but he did. Not only did he receive, but now he took action upon it. I speak to the fathers. You must hear from God, not only how to raise your sons, but how to raise your daughters. Their lives are formed by you taking time to pray, not only praying by yourself and with your companion, but praying with that child. We see here that Joseph not only heard, but he took action and followed through. Neither Mary or Joseph knew the weight of the responsibility to parent the Messiah. Jesus, God, wrapped in human flesh. I was trying to take time in preparation for this lesson to study some of the Jewish traditions that which was taking place in the time when Jesus was born. The Jewish families were often composed of 10 children or more. It was not uncommon for Jewish families to have 10, 12, and up to 20 children. I hear you gasping. I did too. I cannot imagine 10, 12, 20 raising that many children, not only the economic portion of the responsibility, but also all of the religious responsibilities that took place within the Jewish home because they were responsible for the raising of those children because on the eighth day with the male child, they were circumcised. They were brought to the temples and they were offered back unto the Lord, and by age three, they began to teach them the Torah, and they began to break down the Shabbat. All of these things were ingrained in the children, and the awesome responsibilities <clears throat> that were given to the parents to honor God and to teach their children how to honor God. If there was one thing that stood out to me in this lesson on the boy Jesus, was the teaching of the honoring, the traditions that were brought forth. The Jewish home, the families, uh, parents, the children, are all responsible for each other. That is a way of honoring God. Parents are seen as partners in God's creation, and each human being, as to honor one's parent, is to honor God. Uh, Remember Exodus 20 and 12, where it reads, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Honoring your mother and father is a scripture with promise. And this was given unto the children. Are, are we taking time to instill within our children an understanding of these scriptures that have promised that honoring and respecting our parents, there's a promise with that. If you want your life to be long, honor your parent. If you want your life to be fruitful, honoring our mothers and fathers beyond just those days that are marked on the calendar have a promise connected to them. Children were taught to respect their parents as well as caring for them in old age. Oh, I'm sure you have seen and read the stories, even Fiddler on the Roof, about how that the families lived together and you had multiple generations that lived within a home and they were able to learn traditions. It was so many beautiful stories as I studied this that I learned about the challah bread and how they taught the children 
how to make the bread and how the preparation for the seders took place even during the Passover celebration and the children um, cutting the apples and dipping them in honey. All of these things were part of the process of their grooming. It helped them not only to have a family connection, but they learned that their family connection was connected to God. Are we teaching our children how the family connection is connected to God? How God looks upon the family? How God sees us as a family? He tells us the husband and the wife to have a relationship and then he tells us as parents how to have a relationship with our children. The Bible goes on to explain and explore the whole sense of being a family. But let me go back to the teaching of the Torah. The Torah tells the parents, and that's what the, the Jewish families refer to of the writings. It tells the parents to teach their children about their duties as a Jew. Are we teaching our children about their duties within Christianity? Are we helping them to understand it's more than just what we're saying? It actually comes out of the word of God. Are we teaching them the word of God? Faith and family go together. It's regarded as a training ground. It's regarded as preparation for life. Because often what we learn through Christian education, through our Bible teaching, are life applications that we're able to turn and then find gratification when we're able to apply them in circumstances and situations in life. Wow, parents, you feel the weight? Grandparents, do you feel the responsibility? Again, the, my heart went out because so many now are responsible for homeschooling. So many now are responsible for arts and crafts, things perhaps they were not doing. Well, that's just bringing out the creative side of us. But our prayers must be, Lord, these days, these months, before your return, help us to instill in our children what's necessary for them to have life skills for learning as they did for this boy Jesus. Now, again, it was a prophetic announcement that talked about the birth of Jesus and his first journey to the temple and they rendez a rendezvous at the temple with a devout man named Simeon. It's so important that we surround our children with quality people people who are able to speak into their lives. Let's look at uh, Luke 2 and 25. And when the days of purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, you see it was again a set time, they brought him, Jesus, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Verse 23, as it is written in the accounts of the life of Jesus, we first see him in the temple in Jerusalem as a baby to do for him after the custom of the law. So many dynamics are taking place. It did not appear that Joseph or Mary knew this devout man who was in the temple. They were doing according to the custom of the law of the season in their life. We understand that Christian education, Sunday school as we have known it, now Zoom Academy on Saturdays, it's not just a custom, it's an opportunity for devout men and women to speak into the lives of our children. So they did according to that season of life, took them to the temple. According to this season to life, 
we're going online and we're going on Zoom until we return back to the sanctuary as such. Note, there are things in our life that God has prophetically spoken that we must follow the law of obedience to have them fulfilled, not only for ourselves, but for others. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that he must go. They must go in the way that the Lord has given them, but it's our responsibility to train them up. The Bible goes on to say, then took he up in his arms, this is Simeon, and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace. According to thy word for thine eyes, have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of the people to light, to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. You see, Simeon had been waiting for manifestation. Simeon had heard prophetically the word, but he was waiting for the Messiah to appear before him. We again do not know who is waiting for what God has placed within our children. Now the scriptures let us know that after these things were spoken over Jesus, it was after that that the prophetic manifestation of verse 40 comes to be. And the child grew, waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Parents, we must understand that the power of God given to a man or woman of God to speak into the life of our children, such as a Simeon or an Anna, could die until, or they cannot die, until they witness the fulfillment of that prophecy. When we bring our children, our grandchildren, or children from the neighborhoods to the temple, to the church, it sets life in motion. We pray strength into the hearts of and the bodies of parents to be able to press, to be able to persevere. We speak wisdom and grace, creativity and intuitiveness into our teachers to be able to set forth programs and to set forth lessons that will stir the very hearts of our children. These were devout men and women we have to ask ourselves, are we committed? Are we committed to wait on the things that God has promised us? And that takes us back to Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. To everything there is a time. Well, the time went on and now Jesus is in the temple. And Jesus has fulfilled with his family what's necessary, and they're making a journey. And that journey is back to their native land. Now the family is moving along, and the scriptures lets us know they are about a day into the journey when they begin to inquire, where is Jesus? What has happened to Jesus? So they begin to look among their kinfolk to find out where Jesus is. And when they found that he was not with them, they return back, back to the temple, back to Jerusalem to see if they could find Jesus. And then they were there for a series of days and they still couldn't find him. But then where did they find Jesus? They found him in the temple. And what was he doing? He was interacting with the rabbis with the learned men. I'm sure that they were relieved, but as a parent, 
I'm sure that they were perturbed. Yes, I'm glad that you're in the temple. But did you know how fearful we were that something had happened to you? Yes, we're glad that you're seeking greater knowledge. But couldn't you have told us that you were wanting to stay? All of these things were happening, all part of the process to fulfill the divine will of God. But look at the response of Jesus when his mother spoke to him and inquired of him, what are you doing? And he says, you're asking me? Am I not about my father's business? Oh, what an insightful answer. That somewhere deep within him, he understood who his father was. He had respect for Joseph, and he had respect for Mary, but about his father's business. Sometimes when we see our small children doing things, Maybe it's drawing, maybe it's writing, maybe it's acting out being a doctor or a nurse or, or maybe being a fireman or a policeman or one of my granddaughters loves to dance. Maybe it's dancing. Are they perhaps fulfilling what was placed within them to fulfill purpose? Maybe they are that next scientist, doctor with the cure of cancer, or one of these other diseases, COVID-19 perhaps, that's plaguing our world. They may be about what Jesus said was his father's business. Now Mary and Joseph, the Bible said, continued on their journey back home. But I was blessed in the last verse where it said, but Mary pondered these things. Mothers, let's ponder in prayer the life, the responsibilities, the futures, the careers of our children in prayer. Mary prayed over the things that she heard. The boy Jesus destined to be our savior. The boy Jesus destined to hang on Calvary's cross. But now we live and now we have hope eternal because of the boy Jesus. I pray that you'll take time to read this story, to pray over this story, and even to reflect even more of how we can do more to shape the lives of our children, the children of our community, in order for them to fulfill the seasons, the times, and the purposes given unto them. God bless you, and may he continue to shine upon you is our prayer.